Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Now, yesterday I talked about the use of carbon uh, from charcoal in the uh, supernova reactor and some potassium carbonate. And uh, these are for specific reasons and they will also be used in another up-and-coming experiment, which I will talk about more later. However, what I wanted to talk about uh, is something that I uh, was researching uh, the other day and someone kind of on the forums uh, got a little hint of where I might be going uh, and that's really cool. Uh, and essentially it's that not all charcoal is the same and uh, I really kind of gave it away uh, to a certain degree uh, by talking about uh, uh, potassium carbonate. And so I just want to refer to this study uh, done uh, by J.D. Ovington and H.A.I. Madwick, and it's uh, from the 31st of May 1957. And essentially it's uh, done in the Nature Conservancy uh, Merlewood Research Station, Grange Over Sand. And now where is this? Uh, this is Cambridge Air Photos, and you can see this is the... Uh, observatory. There's some photos on here. All the links, as usual, I will give in the uh, description to the video. So you can see here, this is in the north uh, west of the UK. And if I zoom in, you can see Grange over Sands there and the location of this observatory. Anyway, back to the paper. Now, the paper is really looking at a range of different trees that are in this forested area to look at uh, tree management and forest management and the depletion of essential minerals, which are sodium, potassium and phosphorus uh, that you need to give plants for them to grow. And uh, there's some interesting things that I want you to consider here uh, in this. Now, the first up is uh, the dry weight. So this is just like the material is dried and then they analyse it for the constituents. Now, what they're looking at here is uh, several different species of plants, uh, uh, these different trees rather, uh, and they are looking for the sodium content, the potassium content, and down the bottom, the phosphorus content. Uh, and uh, essentially, uh, the black dots here are in the bowl. This is like the tree trunk and the sort of branches and stuff. And the uh, round dots, uh, open dots, are for the canopy, which is like the leaves. Now, if you look at the dry weight for all of these different species, what do you see? Well, you see that... Uh, let's, uh, let's focus on potassium, because potassium is the one that I believe that we're really interested in. And uh, if you look at it, it's a much higher concentration uh, in milligrams per 100 gram than either sodium and uh, um, uh, phosphorus. Now you see that goes from 0 to 150, the potassium goes from 0 to 750, and the sodium goes from 0 to 50. Now he does note in the paper that uh, it doesn't matter, this is height up the tree, so this is 30 meters, this is the, the ground level. Um, and so he's saying that uh, essentially for most of the trees uh, in the dry weight, the, there isn't really much variation uh, as you go up the tree, but it does tend to get a little bit more concentrated as it goes up. Uh, the, one of the uh, really the big departures from this uh, is this particular uh, tree species. However, it's still only 0 to 50, but if we look at the potassium, the higher you go up a tree, uh, the more potassium you get. So as you get to the, the, the branches and twigs uh, that, that are right at the top of the tree, uh, you get a lot more potassium. Uh, and as you look at the uh, potassium in the leaves, these uh, round circle areas, you can see it gets much higher concentration as you go up the tree. Now, why would this be? Why would a tree want its leaves to have more potassium in it? Now, what happens to a leaf? What does it receive? Does it receive things from the environment? What is it really interested in? Why would it have more potassium in the things that are more exposed and less shaded by other trees, uh, uh, elements like the, the branches and, and the leaves? Anyway, so, hmm, little bit curious, eh? Now, um, so, when I posted uh, the um, charcoal and uh, uh, potash yesterday, um, I'm going to go to the second part of this. 
uh, and you get the potash here. This is potassium ash, pot ash. And of course, when the alchemists like, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Isaac Newton, uh, during their alchemy, they, they would get uh, their potash from uh, essentially uh, burning broad-leaved European trees or trees from Europe. You can actually see that in the case of uh, ash in potassium, it still does kind of trend to the right in most cases, particularly with the leaves, uh, except in the case of this particular species here. Um, but it's less pronounced. Uh, you seem to have a, a basic straight line uh, for, for, the, for the wood. Um, uh, but there's still this trend uh, in, in the leaves. But it's, it's, it's more pronounced in the just the dry weight here, you can see in, in every case, uh, it's uh, bending off to the right the higher you go up the tree. So the area you would expect to be more exposed to things that might come from above and around. Um, uh, and so uh, this is really, really interesting to me uh, because um, uh, apparently in Ed Storm's interview on Cold Fusion Now, uh, he was talking about Les Case's work and apparently they were unsuccessful in, uh, or rather he was, in replicating, and even Les Case, I, I believe, was in replicating his own worse because the uh, supplier of the charcoal uh, changed source of the charcoal. Now, what was the charcoal they were using? Well, it's, it's a very high quality type of charcoal and it, it comes from uh, coconuts. Now, the thing about a coconut, I, I lived in India for eight and a half years, the best part of a decade, and I had a, a, about 70 trees in my garden, and they produce three crops a year, but that's all by the by. Um, the, the charcoal tends to be produced from the actual hard shell, not obviously the flesh and not the husk. This is what you call coir. And this is what you make coir mats from and, and stuff like that, and filters for, you know, biomatter and stuff. But anyway, this hard shell here produces incredibly dense... Um, charcoal and some of the finest charcoal uh, in terms of quality that you can get but what is interesting about a coconut well it's not the bowl bowl as it's called the trunk down here is it it's not the trunk up here it's not the trunk up here it's not the trunk it's all the way up here and it's, it's it's really high in the tree isn't it so could it have a high potassium content well let's look at the nutrition of the coconut so this is uh, wikipedia's nutrition here and per 100 grams you have 356 milligrams of that's 10 percent of your recommended daily amount in uh, every 100 grams so if you have a kilogram of coconut flesh you have um a high amount of potassium in there. In comparison, the sodium is extremely low. So uh, there's vitamins and everything in there. Generally, coconut uh, products are quite uh, good for you in terms of uh, a number of different things. Um, but it, there's a lot of fat in there as well, so <laughs> bear that in mind. Um, so anyway, uh, coconuts have a very high amount of potassium in there. And uh, uh, the the question was, is uh, was this because... Um, you know, uh, uh, it did Les Case's uh, Lenner experiment stop functioning because the type of coconut, which apparently came from some South Pacific island, um, was changed. Well, it, it's not just that it could be a coconut type. It's um, what you're seeing here is different trees have different amounts of uh, potassium in them. You know, quite a lot more in, say, this species over here to these species over here. And it depends from where you get it uh, in the tree. And then if you come down here, these sets of graphs show you that in different areas around the observatory, Abbotswood, Bedgebury and West Toffs, uh, different species have different amounts of potassium in them. So uh, what it's saying is that, you know, there's less to be got from the soil. Um, so, for instance, there's very striking here, this uh, particular uh, uh, variety, uh, where is it? One of these varieties, uh, Pseudotsuga, I can't say this right, it's Pseudotsuga uh, taxifola, and it's like this, it's a, it's a type of pine tree, um, uh, you know, so over here, so we can imagine lots of potassium up here, and not so much potassium here, and... Uh, less potassium here and out to go out to here we get more potassium less potassium more potassium more potassium um so 
um, not all charcoal is the same. And so if we go back to the study, so this particular one here in, uh, where is it, in, in Abbott's Wood has a very large amount of potassium. This is the amount of uh, potassium in, in the trunk and this is in the leaves, depending uh, uh, on, you know, um, uh, the area here in Abbott's Wood. Now, if we look at uh, the same tree here in Bedgebury, it has very low amounts uh, uh, by comparison. And uh, they've actually put it over here. I don't know why. And this is somewhere in between. So not only is it the type of tree, it's the height of the tree, the part of the tree, whether it's the leaf, the trunk or the twig. And it's also to do with the nutri nutrients that were available to that tree when it grew that uh, material that then was uh, turned into potash. But I'm suggesting uh, that uh, the important part is uh, for Lena is not just the potassium but also the form that the potassium is in the charcoal. So uh, one of the reasons I want to try the uh, sodium, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, potassium carbonate in addition to this in the Nova reactor is to essentially increase the uh, amount of potassium that's in there uh, deliberately but it may be the fact that you have a particular structure of carbon in a particular relationship with the potassium that does the job. Anyway, so that's it for me today. Thank you very much for your time.